When you're flying, engine failure is a nightmare. But if you're a glider pilot, no engine is just another day in the sky. Gliding is a kind of aviation where pilots are willingly towed into the sky with no motor. And then they have to rely on rising air to travel hundreds of kilometers over jagged mountains. To try to understand this, I was heading to Omerima, a small town on the South Island which is hosting a regional competition. And it was there I learned more about the most amazing sport I'd never heard of. Oh, yeah, now this is about, um, about my bus, is it? Prior to me owning it, it was uh, roadworthy. Um, it only cost me $2,000. I sold my paraglider and it's just become my base here for gliding. Uh, I'm Derek Crark and I've been gliding for 30 years. So I did what uh, most young people do. I do the cheapest option. I, I bought my hang glider when I was 17 uh, out of Bits Aluminium and sewed the sail and that's how we started. And uh, It was that transition to gliding that, um, and I was just hooked. But the hardships are, particularly with racing or competing, it's, it's not a hardship physically, it's mentally, it's really, really gets you. It's really not over till the last day. I think you've, you've got to put your money on, on, on Keith and Max. Max is uh, steady, very steady Eddie, he's, he's uh, Mr Reliable. I spent a bit of time yesterday at low level <laughs> where the bugs are, and I got my wings dirty. It, it serves me right for taking a cheap tow. A lot of people think gliding is just they tow up behind a plane and they, and they come down like a sledge ride and land. That is not gliding at all. A bit hard to describe, really. Um, it's almost unbelievable what we do. Oh, hi, I, I'm Max Stevens. I'm 73 years old. I'm a gliding nut. My goal is to beat Keith Essex. Keith's only relatively recent, he's only been coming out to New Zealand four or five years. But he's kind of wiped the floor with us. <laughs> Not a particularly happy inner tube. The mountains uh, sometimes make competitions unstable, so you never really know what's going to happen. It's more what you know and what you see and what you feel is more important than what the technology is telling you. Like anybody flying in the mountains, sometimes they put their foot in the trap. The trap is when you made the wrong choice while trying to find one of these invisible columns of rising air. If you made a mistake, you can be barred by the mountains and stuck like a fish in a tide pool. It all depends on uh, who puts their foot in the trap and who doesn't. Even with these risks, the pilots were still stoked to fly. But before the first day of competition, they had to attend the morning briefing. Is it on? Am I on? No, I'm not on. Am I on now? Whoever finishes fastest wins the day. But gliders are basically free-range cross-country roller coasters. So organizing the competition is really complex. Our grid time is 1300. First launch is planned for 1330 on runway 09, start height is 7,000 feet, finish you know, any questions? Uh, yeah, lots. The more questions I asked, the less I seemed to know about the sky, which is weird considering it's been above my head my entire life. Yet as I learned more, it became bigger and more complex than I ever imagined. I mean, for starters, the sky and ground really aren't separate worlds at all. Even clouds, which seem so far away, are actually just visible air currents, which are all around us. It's like we live on the bottom of the ocean, and glider pilots learned how to surf. And in the same way a surfer points the nose of their board to catch a wave, glider pilots can use the sailplane's wings to catch invisible waves that are thousands of meters tall. By catching these waves, pilots can travel hundreds and hundreds of kilometers just by understanding the weather and the mountains and how they all work together. And now, 29 pilots were gonna test all of that during seven days of competition. 
Another day in the office. There's this crazy build up as gliders get towed higher and higher into the air until they're gone. From the ground, it was pretty anticlimactic, wondering what was going on up there, where pilots were basically betting their lives on how well they knew clouds. But I'd have to wait till they returned to find out. When they did come back, each of them had a totally different experience of how the day was. It was a lovely day. I just missed a couple of climbs and then, yeah, not so good, but anyway, I got round. Go on, it's early days. I'll take myself a couple of holes and slowed me right down. It's the way the cookie crumbles. I deserve a beer after that. <laughs> the next day, they went right back up into the sky. Different conditions, different day, but the same risk. Flight after flight, when they would disconnect from the tow plane, they would step away from the control and predictability of having an engine. I thought I was here to see a competition, but it was beginning to seem like it was about something much bigger. The problem? I only had one day left to find out. For me, a shot at winnings out of it. My land out on the second day uh, kind of coos where, where I was going to go. Took a risk, paid the penalty, sport. But um, yeah, apart from that, it's been really enjoyable. Yeah, I was really all over bar the shouting. <laughs> so it's, for me, it's probably time just to back off and enjoy myself. I'll be competing, but um, to win, you've got to be pretty intense, like Keith. <laughs> yeah, I've never really been competitive about anything uh, before. Being, it's very different than being competitive with chess or or hockey or uh, football or something. You know, there is no competition between you and nature. You will lose. If you, if you compete with nature, you will lose. You have to work in harmony with it. So they gained more by losing the engine. But there's got to be less risky ways of connecting with the sky. Well, why do people climb mountains? I mean, um, anything, everything that's worth, in my view, everything that's worth doing has some risk. It's, it's hard for the lay person to actually understand what we see, what we do. It's, it's quite unique. I mean, you, you're asking me to explain, I can't. <laughs> you actually get to play with nature's energy in a wonderful environment. You can, you can, you know, it's the sand pit in the sky. Yeah, it's just awesome. Words, you can't actually tell people what it's like to that experience. You've actually got to go and do it. With no engine, these pilots get confined by these natural forces. But that also means they get to be part of that world. So, with one day left, I decided to take Derek's advice and go up. been on planes before, but the second that toe disconnected was the first time that I actually flew. With gliding, you're not just driving through the sky, you're part of it. It made me feel small, yet connected to something huge. Whatever it was, it made sense why these pilots would want to stay up there. But eventually the sun went down, so we had to as well. But it wasn't all bad, because there was an award ceremony to go to, and our flying stories weren't going to tell themselves.
after a few beers and a lot of gliding stories, new names are added to the old trophies, and the competition is officially over. But in the end, the races didn't seem to matter nearly as much as the poetry of surfing in the sky.